Hockey Complex as we get you set for a top 10 matchup between the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Maryland Terrapins. Let's take a look first at Missy Mahark starting lineup for the Maryland Terrapins. Big thing today, Sarah Holiday starting in net for Maryland. Sarah Bates has gotten the start in the previous couple of games, but Sarah Holiday notched a shutout last year against Penn State, so this is a goalkeeper that has had success against the Nittany Lions. And for Char Moret Curtis, the head coach of Penn State, this is the Nittany Lions starting lineup. So much speed they have on that forward line, especially with number one, Rick Morosik and Maura Putsch, who we talked about at the beginning of this broadcast. Yeah, Maura Putsch, 12 goals and 13 assists, but well set on Brooke Morosik, eight goals and seven assists. Missy Maharg, the legendary figure, now in her 29th season, nine-time National Coach of the Year, seven national titles. Just brings in such a wealth of knowledge to the game of college field hockey. And this is a, a coach that really teaches these students of the game every single second that she can throughout the course of the season and year. Missy Maharg. True pioneer for field hockey. And how about pioneer Char Moret Curtis? Her 30th season, five wins away from 500 total. What a legend. Absolutely stunning if you really put that into perspective. She is a statement coach here at Penn State. She played at Penn State and now 30 years as the head coach. And we talked to her this week. I mean, she's got no plans of slowing down. Looks incredible. Newly married just a couple years now and just loving life and loving this team as well as we're underway. Penn State in all blue, Maryland in all red. Delighted to be with you on what is a gorgeous, gorgeous afternoon for field hockey in State College. Quick foul and restart for Maryland. So many weapons offensively for both of these teams. Yet you know, despite all of that, the discipline will be there for probably a tight game. We mentioned how beautiful it is today in State College. 73 degrees, humidity above 50%. A couple of clouds, not too shabby. One of the prettiest venues to play in in the middle of fall, especially here in mid-October. Mid Leaves are changing, it's a beautiful day out. It's a late afternoon game on a Sunday in State College. Another restart, going forward, trying to find Aurelia Meyer. Dropped back into Meyer. It's Brooke Barassi, talked about her numbers, eight goals and seven assists, Aurelia Meyer. Captured our hearts last year with a hat trick here at Penn State against Iowa. Six goals and seven assists, but she's moved back to the midfield, Kara. And a big focus this year on her defense. Still a very active player. I think she works very well with Maura Putsch, who sits, sits directly in front of her at that right forward position. What a story about Pudge. Ten freshman of the year at Maryland. But she's got seven cousins, a brother, a sister, and a dad that went to Penn State. Penn State pulled at her heart. She arrived here and then tore her ACL again. She also did it in high school. But here she is back on the scene, now facing her former team. Maryland inside the circle, dancing with it. Velma Luz got a touch on it for a moment. We'll go out. And one of the remarkable things is this player has had two ACL reconstructions. You don't see any knee braces or any type of equipment that she is wearing. She is back at 100% strength, worked incredibly hard in the off season. Here's a shot and a goal for Maryland. Right off the bat, Velma Lou, she put the spotlight on her and she delivers. You give Velma Luce one inch of space inside that circle where she can put any type of shot on net and she'll do it. One touch shot on net, finds the back of the boards. Penn State's defense absolutely stunned. 11th goal of the season for Velma Luce. One ahead of her teammate, Grace Balsden, who will tell her story in a moment. As we talk about Maryland reloading, of course they lose Sarah Sprink. It's played in here, Kara. What a great feed coming in by Grace Balsden, and 
That's not a skill that you can see any player in the country pull off, but look how easily Velma Luz can do it. One touch sets it into a space where she can get a great strike on it, and wow. A player that continually amazes everybody in the sport of field hockey. For the goal she scored against American, pulling it out of midair and dropping it in the goal, one of the best you will ever see. Similar type stick work right there. Taken away. And State. See how they'll respond to the early lead for Maryland. Keep in mind, Maryland has been off for 10 days and they answered just like that. Borosic has made it 1 1. How about that response? I have a feeling that we're going to see plenty of action today across the 70 minutes of regulation of this game. And Brooke Ross is one of those players that has the ability to get behind the defense. Look at her, the left part of your screen, just sitting behind Maryland's defense. Pops out at the right time. Coming to the right part of your screen. Gets in front of Kerry Hanks and a one-touch shot on it. And that really started with Penn State's press against Maryland's outletting, came up with a turnover. That transition to a free hit taken by Aurelia Meyer just outside the circle. And that led to an eventual goal for the Nittany Lions. Well said, assist to Aurelia Meyer. As Rosick is her ninth goal of the season, Meyer with her eighth assist. So Meyer to Rosick answers the Velma Luce goal within seconds. And we're now tied at one. Excellent crowd here at the Penn State Field Hockey Complex. Welcome in soccer fans watching Rutgers and Ohio State. Pleased to be with you for at least a few moments here. Penn State and Maryland. Whoa. Penn State number five in the country, Maryland number six. Alongside Michigan superstar Carol Lentz, I'm Dean Linky, and we're tied at one. As Meyer tucks inside and go out of bounds and back to Maryland. Really, Meyer, very effective in how quickly she can take those free hits. One of the more difficult positions in the field of play is taking those free hits just around the perimeter of the circle. And you see how well Aurelia Meyer is with the ball. Deceptive, can enter the circle, and is really finding some porous points in Maryland's defense around that perimeter play. Maryland substitution number 18, Sophie Pelzer entering the game for number Missy 10. Missy Mahard, got the talented freshman class. Sophie Pelzer has checked in already for the Terps, just six minutes into this one. The loose goal answered by Barassi. We're tied at one. Grace Boston, you see her, middle of your screen. Gopenauer. Boston filling in for Sarah Sprink. We haven't even got to her yet because it's one to one, but what a replacement though. I mean, this is a player that trained with the British national team, right? Up leading to the Rio Olympics. Was one of the last players cut from the team and for all those who didn't follow the Olympics this past summer, that's the British national team that won the gold medal. who was a center forward a year ago. Now the attacking mid, Meyer, as Char Moret Curtis has really moved some pieces around to add some stability to the team, get the best players on the field, and it has worked. 12 and one, their only loss at Northwestern back on September 23rd, since then four straight wins. I started to say before that Morassic goal, as you see Char Moret Curtis, Wake Forest game scheduled for October 8th was canceled because of Hurricane Matthews. So Penn State, they
they've been itching to get back out there. And the, you know, that was a big game that they had marked on their schedule just due to the out of conference uh, strength of schedule that Penn State typically has when you look forward to the NCAA tournament. One of the key parts that you'll see with Jeannie Bramley is how she is on the forward press and how well she can organize that. But Maryland doing a great job without letting the ball. This is great connecting, That's connection the, of passes. Rissinger to Holesbore. Holesbore can drop some dimes. She's got nine assists on the season to lead the Terps. Yes, coming out. And it'll come back. Take your time, set up what a wonderful play into the circle by Kelly LePage, a freshman on this Maryland team that has really come into her own and has really turned on the Jets at this point in the season. A lot of youth Maryland has, especially on the forward line, but this is a team that progresses and grows. Yes. Penn State substitution number 14, Captain Klein, number 18. Side of the circle, but it'll bounce back. Penn State will start it again now. Quickly played. To Meyer on that right side. There's some defensive work from Meyer to win it back. Rossett sent it forward, and now Dina. That left defensive position, Dina won it. Played in, look at Kelly LePage. Keely LePage, my bad. Part of that great freshman class for Missy Mahari. Page it was right the first time with Kelly, played forward around Meyer, sent in. Rissinger's there, cleaned up on the back line. Meyer got her stick in just for a moment. Marissa Kutri is now in. Whoa. Right in front is Rizzo, able to knock it out. Maryland doing a great job with containing the ball inside their offensive 25 that really started with a turnover from Penn State's defense on the outlet. They are very much in control of their possession. And this is a team that needs to start the game on a very high note. They've even altered their warm up so that they can start the game at a higher pace. They are getting the heart rate up higher than they did before in the previous part of this season. And as you can see, Maryland working at an extremely high rate, but so far doing a great job in that possessive game. Missy Mahar, seven-time National Coach of the Year. 16, Shea Cannon. Emma Rissinger is so active on the field. She constantly puts pressure, pressure and has presence on the ball. That's a great thing to have in a forward slash midfielder, somebody that can really come back and commit to your defense. Penn State on the attack, taken away, stripped there neatly by Holsbor. Be an interesting matchup between Holsbor and Mora Putch. I want to see that really start to play out on the field. Both of those players extremely familiar with each other. And both of those players have the capability to find a lot of explosiveness when they come up with the ball in the center of the field. Boston will push it right. Dina at midfield. Left side again, Sophie Pelzer. Pelzer into the circle. Whistle on Olivia Ryder as Missy Maharg has gone deep to her bench. Multiple subs, not even 10 minutes into this one. Courtney Dina did a great job on breaking Penn State's press. Penn State's press got very confused on that previous set, and Maryland so composed in the backfield. Courtney Dina, number 20 in red, to the lower right part of your screen, just ran out of the screen, starting in position for Delaney Leathers, who was that starting 
defensive back position, and Courtney Dina is certainly doing a great job stepping in. Out of bounds, off Maryland, back to Penn State. Just joining us, Velma Luce. The goal just a couple minutes in, answered by Brooke Verozic for Penn State, and we are tied at one. Penn State going the other way, Velma Luce screaming for a call, doesn't get it. There's Linnea Gonzalez, your Big Ten freshman of the year a year ago. Loose. Isn't taken away. Katie Dembrowski. State will switch it. It's good positioning by Skylar Fretz, number 11 in blue, who just contained the ball. Really stretching the side toward the side of the field, trying to pull Maryland's defense or the press away a little bit to give her some time. That's good adjustment by Fretz. Fretz held that position a year ago, sitting right in front of Jenny Rizzo. The combination between Fretz and Dombrowski is so important. Trying to dance with it. Was Putch, she lost it. Excellent, excellent article on Pudge. You can find by going to gopsusports.com, written by Mandy Bell. As Rissinger is in. Rissinger kept down and kicked away by Rizzo. Again, Rissinger is just such an active player and great job with putting pressure on Fretz and immediately comes away with the turnover. And you have to love how attacking this player is. Has such a direction toward net. Tries to get in, close down the space, and ends up awarding her team a penalty corner. Penalty corner is a major focus for Maryland as they end or as they continue penalty to finish corner. out this season. Corner execution. And look for a drag flick coming from number four right there in red. Grace Balls in one of the best drag flickers you will see in college field hockey. Yeah, incredible pickup as Caroline's already told you. There for one year. Insert coming now from Holesbor. Here comes that drag flick. Rizzo, like she kicked it, it's still loose. And it's in. Staying with it, Maryland. Madison McGuire. The freshman's made it two to one. Well, this is a great initial save coming from Jenny Rizzo. She's able to stay on her feet, and look how much time and space Madison McGuire has. Penn State's defense completely stagnant and letting Rizzo take that shot and deflection. That's the second time now where Maryland has had a lot of time to place a shot on net inside the circle, but initially Rizzo came up with two great saves on that corner defense, just needs some help. Have to love the way that the freshman forwards and attack have come along here at Maryland this season. A team that has a lot of youth, but at this point in the season has a ton of experience. Holesport, push it right side to LePage. Kelly LePage, and lose it, will come back to Penn State. It's a big compliment when a junior player on the team, such as Lane Holesport, has the honor to wear that captain band around her shin guard. That says something about her direction with her team, the communication she has with her team, and the leadership 100% on and off the field. Thelma Luce walked away with the Big Ten Tournament MVP, but Lane Holsbor was every bit as good last year in Bloomington, Indiana. Speaking of the Holland connection, Aurelia Meyer wearing number 23. Penn State has also added some more players from Holland. We'll get to that a little later as Cassie Klein into the game for Coach Bashar Moret Curtis. Back 
Gonzalez with the shot and out of bounds. Maryland Terrapins. Just a reminder, fans, if you want to shot at those tickets for the Ohio State football game next weekend and haven't done so already. I want to welcome everybody you watching the Rutgers the Ohio time. State well, game the that half. went to overtime you know, without deciding a winner. Delighted to be with you in State, State College. Two top ten teams, number five, Penn Just State, reminder, number six, Maryland, Big Ten Field Hockey on the Big Ten Network alongside Kara Lentz. I'm Dean Linky and Kara, tell us what you've seen so far first from the visitors from Maryland. Maryland got on the board early, and what a fantastic goal coming from number 15 in Velma Luce. This is a team that has made a big concern and effort to starting their games at a higher pace, a higher tempo. I've seen that from Maryland. They're doing a great job with breaking the outlet coming from Penn State, uh, very active around the ball, and streaming passes together very well. Pass first mentality is really playing for them. Coach Shar Moret Curtis down one as we take a look at the scoring summary here. Break it down, Kara. Great feed coming inside the circle from Grace Baldwin and Velma Lewis just plays the ball one touch into space and takes a big swing on it. What you have to notice is how Penn State's defense is giving Maryland a lot of time. But Penn State, it's imperative that they responded early and immediately, and they did exactly that. Great take by Aurelia Meyer, sets up Rick Barosic right off the post, and that ties it at one apiece. But we're going to see a lot of back and forth throughout the game today. Maryland's second goal resulting from a penalty corner. Madison McGuire shooting first, gets deflected, gets a second shot, and finds the back of the boards. Take a look at the State Farm State of Success. Penn State at 12-1. Half of their wins have come against ranked opponents. The team that has defeated six ranked teams this season and three of them at home. This is a Penn State team that is undefeated at home. There's a lot of pride when they play in State College. Take a look at the series history between these two teams. Penn State leads the all-time series 2014 and one. However, and it's a big however, the Terrapins have won 10 of the last 11 meetings. Of course, at one point, Penn State was visiting the Final Four pretty regularly. They were there in 82, 86, 90, 91, 93, 2002, and 2007. As we mentioned before, Maryland's won seven national championships, nine coaches of the year for Missy. Mahard. Two legends, Mahard 29th season, Coach Shar 30. Rissinger will get it started for Maryland. Bounds. Maryland pushing forward. We mentioned those players from Holland. There's another one, Anuk Van Asbeck. Asbeck, bring it in. Here's Grace Boston. You can see her. Ranking up right there, Kara. Quick whistle. Back to Maryland on the spin. The freshman Pelzer back to Dina. Balls in again. Balls in, Kerry Hanks could control the back of the bowl extremely well. And Balls in is always looking to feed inside the circle as soon as she's within the 50 yard line. Seen her made some incredible assists from that vantage point. And when Maryland needs more attacking, more aggressiveness, and more production on the attack, Grace Balzin has a tendency to creep up a little bit more on the field. A player that is very, very adamant with her passing skills and her distribution skills. Rissinger, eyes forward, Velma Luce. Back across, Velma Luce making that run. 
Nassima Harg telling us a key to success of Maryland field hockey. Pass first, dribble second. We have breaking news out of West Lafayette, Indiana, as Purdue is hosting a press conference regarding big changes for their football program. For continued coverage of this field hockey match, please log on to btn2go.com. We'll be back with you immediately following the press conference, but right now, we'll send you to the press conference live from West Lafayette. Come on, Blue! Come on, Blue! Come on, Blue! Thanks for joining us on BTN To Go. Maryland on top of Penn State by a score of two to one. Really a Meyer. Carrie, you talked about more defensive responsibilities. Part of the reason for the move back to midfield. Player, really a player that plays with a lot of intensity and she has the capability this year to work with the forward like Laura Pudge, so it's a good decision to move her into the midfield. And you know, just seeing Aurelia Meyer on the field, she has an incredible presence. Pudge touches it into her own space, now a foot race. Pudge will try to win it. Race Boston gets there first. I think one of the ways that Penn State can be successful against Maryland's defense if they find the holes in the pockets behind the defense. And they have the capability to do that because they have speed. It is solid exhibited right there with number 18 in blue and Maura Pudge. And if they can find those holes a little more consistently, that's where Penn State can start to be dangerous. But I think their press right now is a little loose. They aren't able to contain the ball inside their offensive end of the field. And Maryland doing a great job with finding those passing connections to get around this press. So Brozic has the goal. However, Penn State has not had a shot in 15 minutes plus. And that'll be a concern for Char Moret Curtis, the head coach of Penn State. Speaking of head coaches, Char Moret Curtis actually went and saw her head coach, Jillian Rattray, at the atrium. Assisted Living Center in State College. She went with her former teammate Jan Snyder as we say hello to Jillian Rattray, her coach at Penn State. She actually replaced Jillian Rattray. Turnover, Pudge. Back to her left and her right, looking for a blue jersey. Nobody home, though. And now Maryland can build out of the back again. Costly turnover coming from Carrie Hanks in the backfield. Led to, led to a counterattack by Penn State. And Maryland very disciplined with the defense, getting back in front of the ball, not forcing any bad tackles or bad decisions, but instead playing smart hockey. Out of bounds. Last year, the Terps won 1 0 in State College. Melissa Parker, who has moved on, scored games only goal. We've got three already in this one. Mountain of field hockey left. Austin, receiving from Hanks. Dina. Good idea from Dina. On the restart. Selko's call. Boston. Power from anywhere, right? Well, it, it's great when you have a defensive formation that allows these players to get in a more attacking position. For example, Carrie Hanks dropping back to the bottom of the diamond. That puts Balsons up at a higher position. You saw Courtney Dina basically on the perimeter of the circle. It's a really a Meyer. Making 
that run from the right midfield. Penn State really needs to go with speed and at speed if they want to break behind Maryland. Has to be on those counterattacks coming from some quick turnovers. See how far Courtney Dina can get up on the field. Look at the left part of your screen. This is the capability that Maryland has with those two defenders that are able to shape the bowl in the backfield, number three and number four. And then substitution number 16, Shea Cannon for number 18, Mara Punch. Solid defensive work from Penn State of the take it away from Maryland. The outlet though, Hanks takes it right back. Now Dina to Velma Luce. Benea Gonzalez is waiting. Ball now to Sophie Pelzer. Rizzo and go. Jenny Rizzo, the sophomore from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Outstanding freshman campaign. She's had a couple shaky moments in goal this year, but without question, one of the better players in goal that you'll see. Was selected to the U.S. U21 team in August and will be traveling to Santiago, Chile this year for the Junior World Cup with a couple of the players that you'll see on the field today. Maura Pudge being one of those, Linnea Gonzalez. Whistle called against Dina. Now Penn State finally earns a penalty corner. That could mean a really a Meyer time. Well done by Jenny Bramley. With under 10 minutes left to go in the first half, this is the first corner awarded for Penn State, which is quite shocking when you consider that this is a team that averages almost nine corners per game. That's good for second best in the country. So a team that can earn corners quite well and has several corners that they can go to throughout the course of a game. Also saw the Penn State team that was out on the turf an hour and 15 minutes before the game time practicing their offensive corners. So the insert coming now. And Meyer with the shot, Meyer. Able to, I believe number seven. Morano may have touched it. We'll take a look at it. Nonetheless, we are tied at two, and Aurelia Meyer with some power. This has proved to be a very successful corner for Penn State, and Aurelia Meyer actually adjusted a little bit from the insert, and that seemed like it was deflected Morano. for Penn State off of Madison Morano. Perfect positioning of the stick, and that's great placement coming from Aurelia Meyer. Morano with the insert, and Morano with the goal, her first goal of her career. Madison Morano, you see it right there. With under eight minutes remaining, this one living up to the hype. Madison Morano, the freshman from New Jersey. See fans lining up outside of the Penn State Field Hockey Complex. Can't find a seat. Beautiful day, 70 plus degrees Sunday afternoon. High pressure coming from Rissinger. Rissinger able to take it away, and Rissinger able to earn the whistle. Maryland's been able to do that with great success, pressing against that Penn State defense that can't outlet the ball or transfer the ball. And you see how effective it can be when they can come up with it and try to counter toward net. Emma Rissinger, again, such an active player on that forward line. Last penalty corner, we saw Grace Balston come forward with that drag flick with power. Loose inside the circle, resulting in a goal. Insert now coming from Holesborg. Came into this game with a team leading nine assists. 
Pelzer is to her left. Carrie Hanks has come forward. Give it to Pelzer. Pelzer will drop it over to Hanks. Hanks will get it. Far side to Balsden. It'll bounce up off of Velma Luce and come back to Penn State. Corner just seemed off cue from the start. Sophie Pelzer was talking with Carrie Hanks only a second before the ball was inserted. Wasn't in position, it seemed like, around the perimeter of the circle. So the corner took a while to develop, and it didn't really seem like it was on cue to start. Gonzalez. <laughs> Not Gonzalez. Rissinger's on it now. Rissinger will switch it right side. Well, Maryland's doing a great job with, with moving the ball around and getting Penn State's defense on the move. Again, Penn State's defense just seems a little off kilter, a step behind and not putting pressure on soon enough. And that's really something that you have to do against these Maryland players because they are so individually skilled, well skilled. As we said, it's been 10 days since Penn State has played a game. They're supposed to be in Winston-Salem on the 8th. Because of Hurricane Matthew, they did not make the trip to take on Wake Forest. Char Moret Curtis, 30 years, and Lisa Berbencheck Love has been with her 23 of those years. Stuart Smith now in his seventh season from Ohio State. Maryland forcing Penn State to play in a really small area of the field. Look how effective they are with preventing the ball transferring to the open part of the field. They're keeping Penn State, keeping their head down, keeping them consumed in a very particular part of the field. That's really effective throughout the entire first half. Quick whistle, Maryland. Quick restart. That's a great tackle coming from Skylar Fretz. Wow. Very disciplined on her block tackles. Takes over a lot of space, too. This kind of comes out of nowhere. Goes down on her strong side. What a reach and a fight coming from Fretz. Taking it right away, Fretz did from Kelly LePage. We'll get it to Gopnauer. Turnover. Back to Fretz. And again, Penn State has to figure out a way to break that press coming from Maryland. You see how far Fretz is over directed to that section of the field. And the way that Emma Rissinger is coming in on that press, it's almost like a blind type of press. Maryland has several presses that they utilize. But when you have somebody coming in from the other side, that really puts pressure on that defense. Now are feeling the pressure, causing two turnovers. This time, Bramley will lose it. Von Esbeck, freshman from Holland, had it taken away. Bounce up on Barosic. Madison Murano doing a heck of a job coming into this game. A freshman coming out of New Jersey at a powerhouse at Eastern Regional High School, nodding the second goal for Penn State when she's standing in for more of Hutch at that insert position. Turnover in the back, losing it was Brooke Adler. See if Maryland can take advantage, they can't. It's Morosic looking for Bramley. Bramley telling her to go the other side to get it to Hutch. And again, this is where Penn State can really be effective if they come up with a turnover and they go with speed to Maryland's defense. Brooke, uh, excuse me, Brooke Adler playing more of a defensive midfield position compared to earlier this season. An extremely versatile player in the center of the field that Maryland has. Holesborough started this attack. Right now it's with Rissinger in the circle. Rissinger back across, deflected, and Rizzo just knock it out of bounds. I mean, it almost seems like Maryland has an additional player on the field with how Penn State's defense is approaching their offense. Just, again, a little off kilter. The marking isn't totally on. 
but these are forwards from Maryland that a lot of substitutions come in. There's an, a lot of movement and motion on the forward line as well. Love how Courtney Dina can get into this position on the field. Boy, Dina. Just put a move on Aurelia Meyer, and she knuckled to the ground. one minute. Dina playing with confidence from that left back position. Very evident, isn't it, Dean? You're absolutely right. When she can get inside that offensive 25 and just look toward net and try to find some passes or services into the circle. Penn State, the number five team in the country. Maryland, the number six team. A big crowd that has been here for some time. This is where Penn State needs to go. They need to have these self-starts quicker. They really need to gain some speed when they're coming out of their backfield in that midfield transition. Aurelia Meyer, plenty of time coming forward. See there up on Brooke Adler. Ball was lifted into Adler. That's the reason it's a free hit coming out from Maryland's defense. Talking to Shar Moret Curtis, she said she's seen Missy Mahart's team this year go with a lot of aerials than other games. She's seen them keep it on the carpet, didn't know what team to prepare for. That's what makes Maryland so dangerous. But after one, we are tied at two. I mean, a lot of action coming from both sides of the field. And Maryland doing an excellent job on the press, containing Penn State inside a section of the field. But you know, this is only the first 35 minutes. There's still a lot of field hockey to be played. Let's welcome in the head coach of Penn State, now in her 30th season, Shar Moret Curtis, number five, number six, two, two, after one, coach. We had it all, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I think Maryland's just playing a great possession game and we're not, I mean, we are just throwing the ball away and I'm not really happy with our uh, decision making right now, but I, I give a lot of credit to Maryland because I think they're doing a really nice job possessing and we're just playing very disconnected right now. How do you break Maryland's press? Yeah, well, you know, we're the type that we, we like to full press, but we just thought with uh, we, we tried to fall away a little bit. So, you know, we might try to change things up a little bit. Like, Brooke got some great pressure on, but then we throw the ball away. A got some great pressure, we throw the ball away. So, you know, we're not making them pay once we come up with that um, turnover. Coach, good luck in the second half. Congrats on such a great crowd. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks. You guys do a great job. Char Moret Curtis. 30-year head coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions. This game had all the pomp and circumstance, and early on, Maryland got on the board. Penn State would answer. Maryland would come back. Penn State would answer again. Tied at two at the half. This afternoon in State College, Pennsylvania, the Penn State Field Hockey Complex. It's halftime. The Maryland Terrapins out in their red uniforms, getting set. They huddle here before we start the second half. Penn State Nittany Lions in white. We're joined by the legendary head coach of the Maryland Terrapins, Missy Maharg. And Missy, a solid first half for your team. You had quite a bit of the possession. Your thoughts? I think, I think it's a great game. I think it's kind of choppy on both teams. I'm looking forward to a second half. I think both teams have a lot more first look passing to have happen. So I think it's going to be a, a better second half. And I'd just like to see Maryland uh, take some more shots and, and deflect, deflections in the circle. Coach, what's the reason for putting Sarah Bates in for the second half? Oh, did we? No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> let's see. We have two great goalies. I told you guys that when we had our conference call. Couldn't be more excited about that. It's a great place to be in. Uh, we're going to make that, that call game by game, half by half, and uh, feel we're in a good place. All right, Missy, thanks for being with us. Good luck the rest of the half, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Missy Mahard. I love when she says, I hope Maryland can get it done. <laughs> that always cracks me up. Never we, just Maryland as she makes it about the university. Doing so much. She was part of the Maryland United campaign a few weeks ago for inclusion and diversity. Maryland soccer team with Robbie Rogers also joining in. Missy Mahard out front. These social issues and out front is one of the leaders in college field hockey, Maryland. In red on the attack. William Meyer. And the whistle. 
All right, Carol Lynch, you kind of touched on it, but if you're Coach Charmarette Curtis at halftime, based on what she saw in the first half, what did she say to her team? Well, it was probably a very uh, passionate halftime speech, I think, coming from Charmarette Curtis, who wasn't happy with her team's play. And they are disjointed. They seem about a pass behind when they're collecting their defense. They can't stream anything together when they're collecting on their offense. So you have to go back to the basics. You have to go back to your passing and receiving skills. And also, there needs to be a presence defensively sooner. They're letting Maryland really teeter around the ball too much. And then obviously you heard Missy feeling that the game was a little choppy and she's going back to that pass first mentality. I thought Maryland did a great job possessing the ball as we've discussed. And this is a team that will not let up on the gas pedal. And you know, I, I'm impressed with how well they started the game and that's been such a big focus throughout the course of the season. So it's great to see that pay off for Maryland. Asim Mahar never totally satisfied, of course. <laughs> Always looking for perfection. That's what great coaches do. Just two minutes in here in the second half. See Kerry Hanks, number three for Maryland, the cover defender who doesn't mark when Maryland's on defense, she's sitting on the outer part of the circle, so she's ready to apply and help with that double team. And that perimeter play, defensively speaking, is key because you don't want to foul um, a player inside the circle that can result in the circle, and you want to put the pressure on before the team gets in a more threatening position when they're inside that perimeter. You mentioned the threatening position. You also had those great numbers on Penn State with penalty corners, and they ended with just that one penalty corner in the first half that you talked about. Two penalty corners for Maryland. Boy, when you took another look at that goal for Murano, it actually looked like her stick was behind Holiday. So I think Meyer would have scored anyway. I think it was behind her. Great job by Murano stepping in. You know, that's usually a position where Mora Putch is inserting and looking for that deflection. And Meyer just has such force off the sweep and hit. And it is in a very lethal position, that L1 position. Holds board to Velma Luce, and Velma Luce somehow able to spin the ball around. Oh. That holds board and Velma Luce combination is lethal. Holds board will start it again quickly. Hello. Hello. So, number 18. Jeannie Bramley is just so ready to come up with a turnover and explode into that midfield. A player that reminds me a lot of Laura Gephardt. Dangerous opportunity there with Velma Luce lurking. Almost less than a foot away from making it 3 2. Punch in front, great pass. Knocked away there by Sarah Bates. How funny is Missy Mahar trying to play off the fact that Bates <laughs> jumped in there for Holiday. Sarah Bates starting out her field hockey career at Penn State and then transferred over to Maryland, her home state. And as head coach Missy Mahark had mentioned, both of those goalkeepers for Maryland have a great respect for each other and it's a great weapon to have multiple goalkeepers that you can utilize in a game. Penn State in the circle with Barasic waiting for the whistle. Take a look back to the previous opportunity. Brooke Barasa getting to the ball right before Von, Von Aspect, but look at Bates off of her feet, off of her knees, coming up with a great glove save and deflecting it away from dangerous territory. I love the diving effort, though, of Brosick. That's what you need. You need to have those opportunities, and you need to have that type of intensity when you're inside your scoring circle. Well, you're right, though. Give Bates credit, though, coming off the bench. and. The first real opportunity for Penn State 
Bates, a former Nittany Lion, able to swat it not once but twice away. Now the Nittany Lions work the left side. Goknauer, Kirsten Goknauer, the senior. Penn State has four seniors and they all start for Char Moret Curtis. Surveying along the left side. Anaya Gonzalez is in front of her. Taken away though by Penn State. Maryland substitution number 14, Kelly LePage for number 18, Sophie Pelzer. Kelly LePage now will come on for Pelzer, freshman for freshman. Sixteen is Shea Cannon. Said her name in time, but starts out up top for Penn State. Great aerial coming from Balls and in the backfield, and that's a wonderful trap from Von Osbeck. Dropped in front. Rizzo can't stop it. And the goal will count for Maryland. It's Kelly LePage just off the bench and in. 3 2 Maryland. some confusion among Penn State's defense and the goalkeeper Jenny Rizzo. They are calling for a video referral for this exact play. Maryland gets inside the circle. And Kelly LePage right there in front of Jenny Rizzo, Penn State's defense. You see Skylar Fretz actually immediately asking for a video referral. First one used of the day. The umpires will go over to the monitors to review this play. You can see the breakdown on the video referral. Referrals can only be requested by the umpires or the student athletes on the field. You saw the Penn State players right away call for it. And you have to make up your mind of what you want to have the umpires review within 20 seconds after the call is made for a video referral. It took Penn State a bit to actually ask the officials to look for what they deemed illegal. Not quite sure if you take a look back at the play. The ball did bounce up and hit the arm of Kelly LePage off the initial deflection. And I think a good indication there is Jenny Rizzo immediately went over to the official. So she has a pretty close look with how that ball rebounded to LePage. And you see number five Rizzo going immediately to the umpire. You know, even when games aren't broadcasted on BTN or other outlets, Home teams do have the capability to have the video referral, which I think is a great utilization by teams, especially in the Big Ten and across NCAA field hockey. Take another look again at the play. Well, there it did hit her arm, didn't it? Well, that the, the hand is technically part of the stick. Did it go above? It seemed like it did go above the wrist of Kelly LePage. And you know what's key here is as soon as that ball goes in, you immediately start celebrating. <laughs> That's a good job by LePage. But I mean, even for Maryland to get the ball inside the circle, that was a great stream of passing that Maryland had that started all the way in the backfield. That is a whole complete team effort. Maryland bench, Missy Maharg still coaching over there. Yopa DeFries, the associate head coach, but a couple new coaches, Stephanie Fee, from Duke, part of the national team, now an assistant coach, and Joanne Engstrom as well, as Dina Rizzo has joined the coaching staff at Princeton. So, Missy Maharg was energized by these young coaches joining her staff. Stephanie Fee, part of the Olympic team, has been such a great addition to the Maryland coaching staff. Have been informed that Penn State asked the officials to look as to whether the ball hit the foot of Kelly LePage. If that were the case, it would be a free hit. That would be a goal disallowed. Free hit coming out for Penn State. But upon their review, the officials found that the ball did not hit the foot of Kelly LePage. And I think looking at, at the replays, Dean, I, I would agree with the officials 
determination. Okay, so Kelly LePage will have her second goal this season. Missy Maharg approves. Take a look back uh, again at the replay, and the ball did bounce up, but it did not hit the foot of Kelly LePage. So now for the remaining 28 minutes of the second half, Penn State loses their video referral. Maryland still holds there. And of course, there's always the umpire referral that can be utilized for goals or non-goals. Excellent breakdown from Kara Lentz, former captain at Michigan. Now Maryland on top of Penn State, three to two. It's, excuse me, Dean. It, it's crucial at this point in the game how Penn State responds. They lose their video referral. They're now down a goal. And, you know, they did start the second half on a very good note, but it, it's imperative that this team responds on a positive note. There's also a bit of a delay during the video referral process, so some downtime. You see Lane Holdsworth kind of grabbing her, fo her throat, got a deflection. Rambling. Excellent stick work. Diminutive and tough is Bramley. Outstanding season a year ago, now moved to attacking mid, but still has that center forward mentality. Charmorette Curtis loves that about Bramley. Is made quite a few changes. They moved Bramley back to attacking mid. Take a look back at the play where Holzborg got the ball deflected into her throat or neck area. That ball was actually deflected off of her stick and lifted into. And that's something you have to be careful when you're going for a tackle is the angle of your stick. Rissinger, left side, inside the circle, back across. Velma loose, and it's 4-2. Rissinger, loose, Maryland, goal. Tough break for Penn State. That's a great position by Velma Luce inside the circle. I mean, this is just one of the ways that Velma Luce can score. You can put her at any point in the circle and she's in a scoring threat. Great deflection, completely unmarked. It finds a one touch to the back of the boards. The singer back across to Luce. Shield in front and Velma Luce. She just makes it look so easy. A tennis athlete at the University of Maryland before she went on to the field hockey team. And it's been so fun to watch this player play throughout her career. Speaking of incredible stick work, wait until you see this amazing goal against American by Velma Luce. Special. Early part of the season, and you don't see this every day in field hockey, if ever in a season. Velma Luce sitting off the far post. I don't know if that's lacrosse, tennis, softball, baseball, cricket. You pick it. I mean, that is a fantastic goal. That's a top 10 play of any sport that I've seen all season. Of course, as we've said over the years, Velma Luce, an outstanding tennis player. So we might go tennis first, but Velma Luce had four goals in the Big Ten Tournament final victory over Michigan a year ago in Bloomington. And she walked away with the most valuable player honors. And boy, on that team, Casey Tapman, Sarah Sprink, Anna DeSoy, Alyssa Parker, Faye Curran. Let's flash back to a year ago. I mean, this player plays big on those big stages and has always been a threat against Michigan. Last year, she totaled six goals against the Wolverines. And just look at the variety of scoring skills that she possesses. I mean, she's so dynamic with the ball. There is a magnet between Velma Luce's stick and the back of the boards. A, a player that earned all Big Ten last year, tournament MVP, as you stated, Dean. But her season isn't done. Her career is not done. She's looking to lead these Terrapins to the NCAA tournament. So good to see Anna DeSoy on that flashback as well. She was. Such a fantastic player, so unselfish. And speaking of DeSoy's, her sister Lizzie, now a freshman, on the bench for Missy Mahard and the Maryland Terrapins. Penn State now. She's got 25 minutes and 45 seconds to try to rebound here. Bramley 
Skylar Fretz moving up to the center part of the midfield. You see for Penn State trying to add some more attacking presence for the Nittany Lions. It's important that Penn State plays with intensity and urgency, but not to play carelessly. They have to be able to take care of the ball, and at times that's hard if you're in a rush to make up for some lost ground. Amelia Meyer stuck over on that right side, down two goals. I wonder if they'll try to put her up in front of the attack for Penn State. Laura Putch has been very quiet this game. Hasn't had many touches on the ball. Forward line overall hasn't been able to stream a lot of passes together. Laura Putch uh, specifically, this is a player that came into this game leading the team with 12 goals. and. Every game that I've seen her play, she's been such a dynamic threat for Penn State. But Maryland defense shutting her down today. Here's Putch, ring number 18, that yellow headband that she's worn since she was in middle school. Said she thought about changing it up, but just couldn't do it. Big 10 freshman of the year a couple years ago at Maryland, coming home to Penn State where her dad, brother, and sister all attended as well as seven cousins. Penn State not afraid to come back though. Back on September 16th, they trailed number 16, Iowa, three to one. Your final score, Penn State four, Iowa three. Penalty corner now. Stop the shot from Rosick. Watches it go by. All the way from the insert to the stick stopping to the drag coming from Brooke Rossick, all good, but just a little off with trying to find the deflection for Penn State. I think they want to put themselves in that position more often as you cater out the last 23 minutes. So back to Penn State. Selkos. I started to tell you about those changes. Selkos was actually the attacking mid last year. She's now the right back as Ginny Grant Bramley moved from the center forward to the attacking mid. Amelia Meyer moved from the right forward to the right mid to allow Moira Putch to come in. And there's Selkos who has solidified that defense. Turnover though. Maryland going the other way. Squared. Velma Luce can't quite get to it. I think Madison McGuire carrying on the genes of her mother, Julie, or excuse me, Cassie, who played at UNC. Very dynamic on that forward line, coming away with a turnover, directing yourself inside the circle and trying to come away with another goal for the day. Yeah, Maddie's mom played at UNC. And so did Bess Bublander's mom, who is from Holland. She plays now for Penn State, and we understand both of them are there at the Penn State Field Hockey Complex. talk about those Dutch connections to college field hockey in the United States and Penn State afforded the opportunity to travel over to Holland during the off season for a trip that was very instrumental in the way the team has formed together coming into this season. Back in front again. It's Maryland looking for more. Hanks, yeah, what an incredible trip for Penn State. Actually spent one of the evenings at the home of Aurelia Meyer, right next to her former club, where they played. Actually played a boys team. There's Aurelia Meyer. She'll come off for just a bit. What an excellent effort and play by Carrie Hanks. 1v1 situations, 50-50 balls, diving to the turf. I mean, that was invigorating to watch for number three in red. Penn State's number one, Brooke Morosic. 
as they made substitution number seven, Madison Milani for number 23, Aurelia Meyer. And Maryland made a substitution number seven, Emma Rissinger for number 10, Linnea Gonzalez. So Emma Rissinger going out for Linnea Gonzalez. With Charmorette Curtis also making some changes. Maryland keeps it down. I believe a red card issued to Brooke Barasic. You see her sitting on the bench right at the 50 yard line. So Penn State will be playing a player down for at least two minutes. I believe that came from the collision with Carrie Hanks that happened right near the sideline. And Maryland, as a result, now in a pretty good position to extend the lead hey, of this game on, with another penalty corner. Come on, Sophie Beck. Penalty corner and a player advantage. It's Rossi. Hosbor with the insert. Stop and the shot from Velma Luce. Take a look back to the play that resulted in a card to Brooke Barasic coming in from behind to Carrie Hanks, who almost looked like she was falling to the turf anyway, but maybe some contact from behind as a result, the green card for Brooke Barasic. Sophie Pelzer spinning inside the circle. He's trying to earn a corner. Nothing doing though. It's Barasic. Now back into the game. Penalty served. 19 minutes and change remaining in this one. It was 2-2 at the half. Two more goals in the second half coming for Maryland, and they lead it 4-2. See Maryland with that blind press. Velma Luce coming in from the opposite side of Skylar Fretz. You see how effective it is in forcing Penn State to be so contained in this area of the field. Penn State needs to be patient if they're going to try to outlet around that. They need to possess the ball. Quick restarts are key. Quick restart and switching the point of attack is Penn State. They run into trouble over on the right side. Sophie Pelzer slowing it down. Spinning with it though. Here comes Morano. She's got a goal. She dropped it in. It's loose. Trying to do something with it as Gopdauer goes back on the other side and Gopdauer got on frame. This is total team effort with getting it inside their offensive circle in the first place. Penn State being patient from the outlet all the way to the opposite end. And Gopdauer trying to find some space and a little bit of time to get a reverse chip on net. But when Penn State was inside the circle, they need to shoot quicker. They need to get something directed toward net. Maryland with 11 shots, six for Penn State. Penn State with two penalty corners, Maryland with three. Maryland substitution number seven, Emma Rissinger for number 18, Sergey Pelzer. Excellent awareness by Grace Balsden just to step over. Knowing there was no one behind her. We started talking about it in the first half, but Sarah Sprink was so strong defensively last year for Maryland. And then you get this gift, as you said, Missy Mahard was aware of Grace Balsden, but to make it happen, what a huge pickup. Certainly so, and I think it's a lot of experience that Grace Balzen has to gain in life, really, and you know, as a person, and overall being able to come over and compete in American college field hockey, and this is big for her. You know, you definitely have the foresight for Grace Balzen to be going for the next Olympic round for the British national team. Quick passing from Maryland. Boy, when it's on, it is just a beautiful thing to watch. That final pass to Rissi wasn't there, so Penn State will go the other way. Go now. Play it quickly to Brooke Barasic. Barasic on the turn. And a 
hard shot. I really admire back off the bench. And now we are seeing, it looks like a really admire pushed up a little bit more. Can she score some goals and get Penn State back in it? Right now, Maryland on the road leads the Penn State Nittany Lions by a score of four to two. Going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more Big Ten field hockey on BTN. Come in 12 and one on the season. Their only loss against Northwestern, but they trail. Visitors from College Park, Maryland, by a score of four to two. Penn State entered today, averaging just under 20 shots per game. They just have seven right now. Excellent work, as always, by our stat man, Safi Khalil. Four to Maryland. Does look like Aurelia Meyer is pushed up a little bit more, but still on that right side. Jimmy Bramley is also pushed up. And double and double! Verasic. Aurelia Meyer. Captured her hearts last year with that hat trick, all three goals against Iowa. And that interview where she proceeded to talk about every single goal. But I think this season, with the conference having seen the play of Aurelia Meyer, she has a tendency to get tackled a lot earlier when she's possessing the ball. So as she's even gone through this season, I think the defensive pressure that teams have on Meyer is more aggressive. That's a compliment to you as a player. Down the loose and quickly after the restart, find holes for Stop it again, but Maryland will send a ton of red jerseys forward. Osbeck, part of this phenomenal freshman class. <laughs> Penalty corner coming, Velma Luce will earn it. Great patience by Velma Luce, staying on the end line, receiving that pass from Von Osbeck, and love to see how attacking these defenders can be from Maryland. And look at the patience of Luce. Feet are pointed forward, stick is pointed forward. She knows exactly that she's going to get a defensive tackle coming toward her. Finds the foot of a Penn State defender. Livy, live, live on the 50. I just wait there for the ball. Jenny Rizzo in goal. Lane Holspoor with the insert. Keep an eye on Grace Balsden. Shot deflected yeah, here, away here, from here, Rizzo. Here, it was here. Walsden with the shot and Rizzo with the deflection. Stay out, stay out, stay out. This is a great play for Maryland. Drag flick coming from Grace Balsden directly down the center. May have been looking for a deflection from one of her teammates' sticks right in front of Rizzo. Another penalty corner coming from Maryland. Jenny Rizzo is very versed with facing drag flicks, so much that her assistant coach, Stuart Smith, has been practicing on Rizzo all week on those corners, especially on the drag flick, and this is exactly the scenario that Rizzo is used to off the corners, and she's gotten plenty of practice this week. Again, this is the pregame, and also her international experience with the U21 team. She has faced a lot of drag flickers across her career. So she's very experienced in that to save these rag flicks. Pose four. Wow, they point to the spot. Brooke Rozic doesn't like it. So another golden opportunity now for Maryland. Brasic, the fly position for Penn State's corner defense. She didn't break down her steps when Grace Ballison was trying to get around. A stroke is called inside the circle. Ballison slow to get up. 
So Bosden essentially earns the stroke. The foul from Barasic, and now she'll take the stroke. Rizzo ready, but not ready enough. And it's 5-2, Maryland. Off the stroke and in, Grace Balsden. What a season she is having. And now Maryland on top, 5-2, and perhaps some Penn State players might be hanging their heads just a little bit. Let's see how they respond. Grace Balsden, the go-to player to take penalty strokes for Maryland. Just simple. That's all you need on the penalty strokes is simplicity. Five places that you can place the ball, the low two corners, the high two corners, and the space directly above a goaltender's head between that and the post. Balsden can pick any one of those spots, but as long as you keep it simple, that is the biggest success you can have with penalty strokes. Balsden two for three this year on penalty strokes. Her 11th goal of the season for Balsden. Now just one behind Velma Luce, who with her two goals today has 12. And it's 5-2 Maryland. Eleven minutes. Is that enough time for Penn State to get back into this one? Down three now. Proving to be difficult. You know, it's been a very disjointed game overall for Penn State. As soon as they start to gain some progress or momentum or some looks on net, it, it's been disrupted. They haven't been able to possess the ball. So overall, it's been a big battle for Penn State. Gopnauer looking for an opening. All over is Kelly LePage. Clock still running. Meyer now drifting over to the left side. Amelia Meyer having touch. Now to work the clock, and Nuke by Osbach. Go now. Amelia Meyer. Fretz. Now all the way over to the right side. Dina is fouled. And boy, what a job Dina has done today to pick up the foul there against Madison Murata. A really complete defender, very strong with her black block tackles, her individual defensive skill, but has had the opportunity this game by the formation of the backfield to become a little bit more on the attacking part of the ball. And just seems very comfortable in that position. Aurelia Meyer, an effort play right here. Almost earning an assist. Bates will kick it away. Composure, complete composure in the backfield from Maryland. Stop from balls in, ball gets deflected out. Penn State have possession and then Lane Holsbor comes in and plays down a good block tackle, forcing a free hit to come out of the backfield. Maryland's defense has not seemed frazzled or out of control at all this game. Whistle there. So quickly, Maryland may not be done here. Selkos pick it off. She's one of the four seniors that start for Shar Moret Curtis. Aurelia Meyer now over on the right side. Still loose. Back in, and what a shot for Penn State. Katie Dembrowski pushing forward has made it 5-3. I'm not 
not sure if this is actually a goal allowed. You see a conversation with the officials along the end line. Take a look back at the previous play. Shot is saved and deflected out by Bates. And then the shot that what looked like to seem to go in did happen directly along the perimeter of the circle. Again, the Penn State team does not have a video referral. However, the umpires do have the capability to use a video referral to evaluate the legality of a goal. And this is, I believe, exactly what they're doing right now is utilizing an umpire referral. And when we looked at the replay, the ball was directly on the line around the perimeter of the circle. Or this might be a Maryland team referral. The video referral is to determine whether or not the shot was taken inside or outside of the circle. So you can hear the PA announcers say exactly why they're having the video referral, just what you said, Kara, to determine whether Dombrowski's shot was in or out of the circle. You take a look at the Penn State bench. Let's see. Katie Dombrowski stops the ball directly inside the circle, and the ball was starting to travel across that line. Upon that replay, it does look like the ball was, in fact, outside of the circle. When Dembrowski hit it, the initial trap, however, the ball is situated on the inside of that hard line around the perimeter. It's a fantastic shot from Dembrowski, but she may have just missed it by a couple inches. Off balance on her right foot. Great look by our production crew to get you as close as you can. See where that ball is positioned. Officials now having looked at the video and the replays have made a decision. They're pulling both coaches over right now at midfield to talk about their decision. Sharmaret Curtis, Missy Maharg, part of the 1995 Pan American team. These two fast friends for a long, long time. Two of the legendary figures in the game. State bench, they are happy. Earlier we showed you Stuart Smith. You see him right there. Stuart Smith also wanted us to acknowledge the team impact teammate, Michaela Nago, who's got a disease that affects the nervous system, causing tumors to grow throughout her body. She's with the team, she's at the game right now. To learn more about the team impact teammate for the Penn State Indian Lions, Michaela Nago, go to Facebook.com prayers for Michaela. Charmorette Curtis saying it's a special young lady. 5-3 though, the goal will count. Dombrowski with her fifth goal of the season. Dombrowski is such an important player that Penn State has in the center of their midfield. She's extremely effective with the one touch and two touch. Her passing skills and distribution skills are phenomenal. And you can see what she has the capability of doing when she's situated on the perimeter of her circle. That was a great shot for Dabrowski to pull off. Unfortunately, card given to Carly Selko, so she'll sit out for a couple of minutes. Selko's. Out of the game, drop back to Meyer in front. Meyer stumbling down though. Penalty corner, but just really couldn't get a whole lot of mustard on it. As I stated earlier, Aurelia Meyer is facing defensive tackles and presence sooner. And you can see what one, two, three Maryland defenders trying to get something on Meyer. Taken down in the process. Turn of events as we close out the final six minutes of this game. Excellent shot by our crew, led by Kian Dolachahi. Just even the breathing right there. As these players leaving it all out on the field. Meyer, ready, stop, and shot! And in! May have been a deflection, but it's 5 4, and here come the Nittany Lions. It's 
says a lot about the intensity and competition of a team that's ranked in the top 10 that has been able to battle back into this game. And really the go-to corner that Penn State has, the same exact play that they were able to score one of two goals against Ohio State. Short side to Meyer, deflection going to the inserter and Mora Putch. Saw that with Madison Murano in the first half. And the one way that you can tell defensively if you're Maryland as to whether that ball is going to Meyer, the L1 position, is by the position of the foot of the inserter, of Putch. Where that foot is pointed is where that ball is going. These are very fine details that players tune into, but still when you have the strength of a player like Meyer who can pull these shots off, it's still hard to defend. Pretty sure they'll give that goal to Moira Pudge. We'll confirm it though. If it does stand, Pudge, the transfer from Maryland, will have her 13th goal of the season. Gonzalez, Big Ten Freshman of the Year, hasn't played a ton, is seem a hard time freshman earning some time even ahead of Gonzalez. Both now. Now at 5-4, five minutes seems like a lifetime for the Penn State fans. Hard whistle against Anuk Van Osbeck and she being issued a card, so Maryland will be playing with a player down for at least two minutes. You start to feel the crowd start to get into this competition. Yeah, what a great crowd. They've been out here early. You see them even standing behind the fence over by the benches. Beautiful. Sunday, mid-October. number 13 for Maryland, Anouk Van Asbeck. So Anouk Van Asbeck. Card. So now Penn State with the player advantage. Four minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Velma loose. Coming all the way back to help out defensively. And let's see how Maryland will build out of the back. Doing a great job without letting the ball from their defense. Look how well situated they are with their passing streams, always on an angle and good support position with each other. You know, again, as stated earlier in this game, this is a defense that hasn't really ever looked frazzled or out of control. It's important that they keep that type of presence in the game at this point. Penn State substitution number 28. Press coming from pressure coming from Moira Putch on that press, causing the turnover in the center of the field. But I believe it'll still be a free hit awarded to Maryland. And perhaps another card issued. I'm not quite sure. Indeed, Dombrowski that magnificent goal to make it five to three. Meyer, who should get credit for two assists today. Morado, the first one, back in the first half. And then we think it's... No, they're gonna say Meyer gets the goal. Interesting, so Meyer will get the goal. Meyer assist for Pudge, just the way we thought. Nonetheless, it's five to four. Amelia Meyer off the penalty corner. It's been key. Three minutes remaining. Penn State trying to force some overtime. A couple of overtime soccer games on the women's side here today. Why not one in field hockey? <laughs> it's a long Sunday. Punch. Once again, Dina. We hit coming for Penn State. There's Punch. Dina, keep an eye on her. At the moment, it'll be with Fretz. Loose. Gokenauer, the senior. Now you know Maryland trying to keep an eye. On the clock. 
Reese balls it. The outlet. Just notice the presence that Ballsden has with her decision making, taking her time, sitting over the ball, not rushing that free hit coming out of the backfield. What that signals to your teammates is relax. You want to let them get into position and not force anything. It's very effective to have that type of presence in the backfield. So a minute 35 remaining. Maryland coming over from the ACC in 2014. Now the biggest conference for field hockey, the Big Ten. But in addition, they have been with Missy Mahard. Missy Mahard and all the Big Ten coaches talk about the importance of a tough schedule. That's why they play all these competitive non-conference games as well. Michigan's played North Carolina twice to try to prepare to win a national championship. Penn State trying to prepare to tie it. Push to the ground. And Emma Rissinger asking for a review. what the umpires are going to review. Emma Rissinger, player immediately on the ball. So the ruling on the field is a corner. Maryland still has their video referral. They are going to utilize it now with a minute left in this game, or excuse me, under a minute. Rissinger immediately went over to the officials and that usually signifies a lot of confidence that the player directly addresses the officials. And I think one of the great things with the video referral process is that there is a line of communication between the players and the officials on the field. And take a look again. Jeannie Bramley comes out, possesses the ball. Rissinger comes in from the side. Bramley goes to the ground, so I believe because of the obstruction, this is the reason that it is a corner awarded for Bramley. I'm not exactly sure what Rissinger is asking for instead on this particular play. Be a major game changer, though, if this call stands on the field, giving Penn State another opportunity for a corner on which they've scored two goals this game. Goals coming from the power of Aurelia Meyer as well. Missing the hard. Meeting at midfield. Waiting on Penn State's coach. Char Moret Curtis. Stars pleased. After reviewing the play, the players have determined that there was no foot by Maryland. As a result, Penn State will not be awarded a penalty corner. So in fact, the reason for the penalty corner call was an infraction against Emma Rissinger in the fact that the ball, so the official thought, hit her foot. Upon review, and clearly from this replay, it did not. So instead, Penn State will not get a penalty corner, but instead a bully occurs on the field around five meters outside the circle. All right, and in that is Bramley versus Luce. Waiting on the whistle, 49 seconds remaining. Loose, had it for a moment, now Bramley. That was huge. Well, it's also important that you put the 
best stick skilled player on, on your team in a bully situation in Velma Luce. Velma, get out! We've seen it. Sophie, Today get out. from Velma get out Luce, we saw it last year at the Big Ten Tournament Final, and you saw that unbelievable goal against American. Velma Luce with two more goals here today. 15 seconds remaining. Penn State with a valiant comeback to make it five to four. You can hear the Turk faithful in State College as Velma Luce heads to the corner. And Maryland gives Penn State just their second loss of the season, a 5-4 victory. If this game is any indication of what the Big Ten tournament is going to have, I think we're in for a sure tree. This is a great standoff by Maryland was able to hold off a very prolific Penn State offense in the later part of that game. I think we've seen everything today that you could possibly ask for in a field hockey matchup. Credit to both teams for really putting in a ton of effort. Since entering the Big Ten, Maryland is 4-0 versus Penn State, and all four of those victories have been one goal wins. Two fantastic teams in the Big Ten and nationally. We're going to take a break and come back with much more from Happy Valley. Right now, the happiest of them all, the Maryland Terrapins. They knock off the number five team in the country, the Penn State Nittany Lions, by a score of five to four. Back with